Okay, a number of you have been asking for a more detailed tour of the uh, engine room and Mr. G, so I'll try to cover a bunch of stuff here for you today. And uh, let me know if you've got any questions and I can uh, shoot some more or answer the questions online. Anyway, this is a uh, Gardner 6LXB, six cylinders, uh, two heads uh, separating them. They're um, uh, two banks of three, and so makes it nice. Uh, there's a single uh, crank uh, a cylinder block down here, so the liners can be replaced, which is what I did when I was rebuilding it. And then the heads where the valves are, <clears throat> and uh, of course the crankcase, which is aluminum. So the heads and the crankcase are cast iron, and then the large uh, crankcase itself is all solid aluminum, as is the uh, big huge oil sump or oil pan down here. These are your uh, fuel injection set up here. So this is the uh, drive system. It gets driven off the engine's uh, chain up in here. So you can see this shaft going inside here into the uh, chain case where the timing chain and everything else is located. This shaft is driven and then this shaft around here is a PTO power takeoff. And I'm using that for one of the two electrodynes. The other electrodyne is up here and it's being driven by a belt off of the front. So uh, this uh, shaft here drives the uh, injection pump so there's a series of cams in here these are quite handy these are priming levers so it's very nice uh, for starting or for checking injectors or even to just to uh, do some servicing you can uh, pull in and, and uh, cancel out one cylinder at a time each pipe then comes out with the high pressure lines it's all purely mechanical there's not a single electron flowing on this engine when it's running starter obviously is electric or hand cranked and then once it's running it's all um non-electric so that makes it kind of nice and simple just a holding tank here for the uh, fresh water so we use fresh water inside the engine no salt water and then we cool the fresh water with salt water heat exchangers that i'll show you in a minute this i've got the chain removed right now but this is the crank for the hand crank there's a chain that goes around here and then goes down if we have a look here down to the similar matching sprocket down here for the chain for the uh, hand crank starter and then i've built this um ribbed or um, timing belt, serpentine belt system here with a pulley down there, a pulley here on the electrodyne, and then a pulley over there on the uh, Jabsco uh, saltwater pump. And then this is just a spring-loaded idler with a mounting system that I built to keep a constant tension on it. So it's very nice, very good drive, uh, no belt dust and no uh, belts to adjust. This uh, spring in here just keeps a constant tension on the belt so that it's always got just the right amount. So it works out very nicely. Uh, what else could we show you? Uh, this is getting a lot of attention as you've been seeing on the blog, the uh, oil pressure sit up here. So I've got now two gauges just to be doubly sure that um, we know we've got a correct reading. Inside here is just a typical oil cartridge filter. This is the infamous pressure relief valve and this is what I can adjust. Loosen this nut off here, adjust this uh, up and down which has a spring on a piston that you've seen in some of the diagrams, I think. And this allows oil to bypass the filter and it's how you get the pressure dialed in just right. On a gardener, it wants to be 35 PSI at uh, 1000 RPM once the oil's warmed up. Uh, kind of nice, you've got purely manual gauges for temperature. So this is the oil temperature gauge here and it's just literally a, um, a typical bulb type uh, thermometer inside. You can see with the blue, so very easy and kind of uh, foolproof. I'm adding this uh, digital sensor here that's going to feed into our Maritron system so I can be able to find out anywhere on the boat at any time what the um, temperatures are at. And then we've got similarly, I've added now this uh, sender here for oil pressure. So we'll get oil pressure on the ship's um, data as well. And then up here uh, is a similar temperature sensor. This one's case is for the uh, water. If you see here, this is the aluminum uh, cast aluminum uh, uh, manifold for each of the cylinders to inject the water in there and keep the coolant flowing. This is your uh, intake manifold here. Um, what else can we show you? Um, this is where the uh, hand crank goes. <coughs> Sorry for the terrible video work here, but um, so this fits on here. There, like that. And now we've got a hand crank set up that we can crank the engine over with. Uh, this could be done for emergency starting, and which is actually quite feasible. We've done it several times. You just take off the release levers, 
get the flywheel going around and then flip the uh, levers and she uh, starts up. But what I find it's most useful for is just surfacing, doing valve adjustments, that kind of stuff to be able to easily turn the uh, engine over. And then this little guy comes off and there's a mark on the flywheel, several of them actually, for timing the fuel injection and uh, setting up the valve. So it makes it uh, very easy. Uh, you've been hearing and reading lots about the um, oil situation and so as I say this is the filter this is the pressure relief valve this is where the bypass oil goes into and then the bypass oil itself comes into this copper line goes down and now <clears throat> with just gravity feed there's not pressurized it supplies oil for the fuel injection pump setup and then goes all the way forward through that pipe you can see up there and just drains over top of the timing chain keeps it well oiled and then goes back Back down into the oil sump where all the oil is. Uh, the engine holds 27 liters altogether, so quite a bit of it. Uh, gardeners tend to run quite cool, so oil temperature when fully warmed up is about 62 degrees C, and the water is about the exact same. So it's a, a fairly straightforward system. Uh, this is where the where am I here? This is where the oil comes out from the oil pump. So the oil pump is in, immersed in oil down inside the oil sump, and then goes up into a body, uh, a drilled passage here. Comes out into this pipe. Now goes all the way up here and comes into the PRV, the pressure relief valve. And most of that oil is going to go under pressure into the filter, through the filter, out this side, and that's where our pressure gauges are. So we're getting the first take. On the pressure in the system and then once that uh, oil gets uh, into this uh, junction box here it comes down this pipe goes back down and now feeds into the um, infamous pipework system on the bottom of the crankshaft main bearings uh, oil check here throttle link here you get a lever to uh, look after timing advance as the rpm changes and then this is the governor which keeps the engine at the uh, constant rpm as the load goes up and down this is the uh, CPP NOGVA control pitch uh, gearbox here. Uh, we don't have uh, transmissions in terms of forward and reverse, so this is just a reduction gear uh, to uh, drop us, I think, uh, 3.1. Uh, so about uh, a third of the engine RPM is what's coming out the shaft uh, on the back there. This is one of two heat exchangers here. This is the one for the engine's uh, coolant water. And then this red guy over here, they work the exact same way, but this is for cooling the oil that goes through these lines into the NOGVA. So one heat exchanger, it gets cold salt water flushed through it all the time. And then oil gets run to the opposite side. Whereas this one, we run fresh water in and back into the engine and then use the salt water to cool that fresh water down and keep all the temperatures under control. These are the two uh, strainers for the intake uh, seawater. So this is one of the other sea chests back here. You can see hiding behind the exhaust hose. So seawater comes in here. This is welded into the bottom of the hull. Seawater comes in, flows down this tube, and depending on which valve we've got open, either goes through this strainer or this strainer. So we can instantly switch over if one of them gets clogged. And then on this side of the engine, we've got the, as I said before, this is the intake manifold, uh, this is the exhaust manifold, and then this is the oil cooler. So we take oil with its own oil pump and system, and oil gets uh, set into the uh, center of the, the tube here. Salt water gets fed into the outside of it, and then it flows both water and oil down here. Not together, of course, they're separate. Water comes out here and goes back out. This one here is uh, the oil, comes out of there and goes back into the oil sump in the engine, having been nicely cooled down. We run a uh, wet exhaust system, so out of the exhaust manifold here, we get the exhaust coming up this U-turn. I've got it loosened up now just because I've been handling it and I want the oil and stuff that may be on there and smoking a little bit to just escape. And then these uh, jackets get all closed up so we keep the heat all inside of it. We've got uh, a basically dry exhaust all the way up through here until we get to the elbow. Uh, stainless steel elbow that is up. It's kind of hard to see because it's all wrapped up in the uh, jackets here, but we're injecting salt water through this pipe and uh, that gets sprayed in uh, all around the outside and injected into a mist and cools the uh, uh, the exhaust gases down so that now we can have them uh, running through rubber and we don't have to have uh, insulated pipe through the boat and get, get, out, get rid of that. The uh, exhaust and the water goes in here. The water just instantly drains out the bottom, connects down and goes through the exit sea chest. So that's a constant flow of seawater. And when we, every once in a while, when we first start, we check over there that we've got water, good water flow. Uh, we also have that alarm you might've heard when we started the engine and uh, get to uh, see that uh, the flow is going all the time. So we know we're not in a, an overheating situation. 
And then, like I say, this is the pipe that has uh, salt water, cold salt water pumped into the exhaust, drains out there, and then the exhaust gases now come through this pipe, go down here underneath the day tank and out the side of the hull. And I think that's about it.